My goal for this video is to explain you Apache Airflow in a most simple and intuitive language. Apache Airflow is a widely used tool in the world of data engineering. And if you go to any job portal, you will find tons of job. On their website, they say that it's a platform that will allow you to programmatically author, schedule and monitor workflows. But what does that really mean? Let's go through a simple example. Let's assume you are working in a finance company as a data engineer and you are given this task to extract the stocks information using some API or let's say you are doing web scraping and extracting information such as sticker, price, book value, etc. Then you are doing transformation where you are calculating a new column price to book which is price to book ratio. You are removing invalid records right for PB ratio this doesn't have book value so you probably want to remove it. You are doing some currency conversion. Reliance is an Indian stock, rest of it dollar. So you are doing a rupee to dollar conversion and so on. And eventually you want to load that data in Snowflake. Snowflake contains huge volume of data. So daily you are loading these prices and you are doing this computation nightly. Okay, your manager said that every day at night we need to do this computation. So what you can do is you can write simple Python code. Okay, extract, transform and load functions and then you can call them in sequence. It's a simple file called etl.py which will perform these three tasks in a sequence and then using Unix cron job you can set up a nightly schedule. You can say okay daily at 2 a.m. in night please run this file. Now this approach is straightforward it works good but there are a couple of issues. First let's say there is an exception in extract okay. Let's say the website or the API from where you are extracting the stocks data is down for few minutes only for few minutes it is down and when you are running this at 2 a.m. this will fail and let's say this is throwing exception so then remaining things will also fail right so there is no inbuilt retry logic or failure handling now if you're a smart programmer you will argue that so what I can code up my retry logic I can have a for loop I can have three retries and if there is an exception I will wait for 10 seconds and I will retry again and it will work. Let's say if the temporarily this API or let's say website is down then after waiting for 10 seconds it will uh, come up. This works fine but this approach is very manual, repetitive and you must add this to every function where there is a chance of failure. So it's not very scalable. Second problem is there is lack of visibility and monitoring. What if this script fails? In that case you have to set up all the monitoring and logging on your own using some external tools. You have to go to the Unix machine where this is running and you have to you know examine all these logs. I used to do this a lot at Bloomberg. Uh, so this is not a great approach in terms of visibility and monitoring. So at Bloomberg we used to have all this external monitoring tools uh, to uh, capture the failures and success etc. Another thing you want out of this is what if you can represent this uh, particular data pipeline in form of a DAG. So DAG means directed acyclic graph. Directed means the data is going into uh, one direction right. So there is a direction to it. Acyclic means there is no cycle. It's not like okay you are doing transform load and again you are going back to transform. There is no cycle to it. And graph means if you know computer science fundamentals this uh, structure is called graph okay. So what if you can represent this workflow this pipeline as a directed acyclic graph with retry and all other features okay. This thing you can't get in your plain python script. So there is no dependency management see here I am saying that transform depends on extract. And by the way this is a very simple graph you can actually have a complex graph. You can have even more complex graph than this okay you have multiple steps some branching logic some things you are processing in parallel. Now if you do this in python of course you can do this in python but it is not very intuitive it is complex and you can't get this kind of visualization as well. So airflow tries to solve all these problems. In airflow you will import DAG so you will say from airflow import DAG and then with DAG you will give a name to your pipeline so this is called a DAG ID. Then you will have start time okay start date actually from this date this pipeline will run every day at 2 a.m. right. So this is a cron syntax so schedule is set and then 
you will specify your three tasks okay so first task is extract function so extract function you will put it in this python operator you call it task t1 then transform function you call it task t2 then load function you call it task t3 and you simply run this pipeline you will say t1 t2 t3 it will execute these three things in a sequence now the beauty of this kind of programming is it's very declarative right here you can say okay retries is three and it will automatically do retry tomorrow you want to change retries to five let's say and it will do that you want to specify retry delay you can specify it it's like you are having some kind of configuration file here and you are just changing bunch of parameters so this way the possibility of introducing bugs will reduce and also the code is readable very much extensible once this code is written you can visualize this dag in airflow ui okay so this is the airflow user interface and if you go to this dags you will be able to see your pipeline my pipeline id is etl underscore pipeline so see here i am able to see it etl underscore pipeline is the dag id and you can see the schedule here next run latest run see you all, see all this information here and then uh, you can also trigger it manually by the way when you go to this see you will be able to see all the runs right now you can go back and you can also trigger it manually see if you want to trigger usually in production you don't trigger it manually but just in case i'm just showing you uh, it will be usually run on that nightly schedule okay now let's say at night 2 a.m is running see this is running now so when you click on it you will be able to see the status of your process in a nice ui see now it is saying success see all these three steps you are able to see how much time it took like eight second here you are able to see what are the sub steps uh, how much time each of the sub steps took okay if there were any failures if there were any retries you will be able to see all that information you can also see the logs see you are you are seeing logs for extract you can see the logs for transform load it makes debugging so much easier it makes tracking of your pipeline runs so much easy you can also click on this particular icon and visualize your dag so just to summarize the differences between your plain python approach versus airflow See, Python script with cron job is very easy to set up. Airflow will require some setup Docker and all that. But once that is set up, you reap a lot of benefits. First one is you get nice web UI for your monitoring and observability. You also get a retries and alerts built in in a declarative way. Dependencies are visualized through DAG graph. Then it is scalable. Apache Airflow is scalable because it uses distributed computing and then there are distributed workers okay whereas here if you want to do distributed computing you have to do multi-threading on all of that on your own then there is extensibility because apache airflow has many integrations see we saw that python operator right similarly let's say you want to do something with aws or adls uh, it has a lot of integration in terms of those operators and it is best suited for production grade multi-step pipelines okay uh, and in the industry usually your pipelines will be complex uh, and for that apache airflow is more suitable that's it folks i hope you have some understanding of airflow now